Hello, my name is Jamie Cawley. In this session, we're going to cover the configuration and deployment of a CAP application into the Kima Runtime. The sample we're using can be found in the Kima Runtime extension samples, known as this CAP order service. Before we start, let's take a look at the solution diagram to get an understanding of how this application is configured. The CAP service will provide us a collection of orders and will be secured using Access UAA. It will use the SAP HANA Cloud database for a persistence layer. Additionally, within the service, there's a CDS action defined, which utilizes the destination service and the connectivity proxy to call a mock application that's running locally via the SAP Cloud Connector. In preparation of the session, I have a few of these items already uh, configured. So that's for you. I already provisioned an SAP HANA Cloud database and created an HCI container for it. I created a service key for this HCI container and copied those credentials into a secret, which I then applied into my Kima runtime. This secret, you can, you can find it within the KH directory. And you can find these exact steps within this readme file. I also created a destination, as you see here. Uh, this des destination is used to connect to our, our mock application, which will run locally. Um, this destination you can find in the BTP uh, directory seen here. I also connected the, the SAP Cloud Connector to my sub account and defined a connection within the uh, SAP Cloud Connector to my local mock application. Now I've already installed this CAP samples application using the M NPM install. Next, let's take a look at the CAP application itself. You'll find that in the app directory. And within app directory, you'll see we have a, uh, a database schema definition and a service definition. Uh, what's important here is the package.json. Within here, you'll find uh, a reference to our destination called local mock. And within this application, we reference this as external orders. This is used within our service definition for our order service as shown here. And basically what this does is it connects to our, our local mock application and posts an order uh, ID, which then that mock application returns us an entire order, which we then save into our database. And we just return that uh, how many rows were affected and what the order ID was. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to VS Code, and we'll start setting this application up. So you see here, I already have the application uh, or this repository cloned, and I have this cap order service uh, opened here. Now what's interesting uh, as well here is you'll find many of these uh, calls listed in the, the readme documentation as curl commands, but you can also, if you're using VS Code, you can also use this request.http file. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna start this uh, local mock application, which is found in a connectivity proxy folder. So I already have my terminal open to that. So I can just uh, start that. And so this first call in here is to call that. So you can see here that I post an order to it and it just returns me, or I, I'm sorry, I post the order number to it and it returns me an entire order. And as I mentioned, I already installed my cap order service so I can just turn on CDS watch and start that. And I'm gonna close this. And if I just do a request for orders, you can see that returns me two orders. If I post uh, an order number via my CDS action, you see now that we have uh, three orders here. Okay, so that's basically how the app uh, itself works. Pretty simple. So let me uh, stop this. And basically what I'm gonna do now is just start uh, setting this application up to be built and installed into the Kima runtime. So these steps you can find in this uh, readme again. 
So as mentioned, I already did these steps and we already have these uh, other pieces configured. So right now I'm gonna start doing this prepare the app for deployment. So the first step here is to do this build. So basically what that does within my app directory generates me this gen folder, which contains my uh, application uh, itself in a, a built format. And you can see here, we have a couple calls uh, to build these Docker images using uh, Picado. Uh, so I already did this, so I'm not gonna do these right now because they do take a couple minutes to run. So I already built these two and I already pushed them to my, uh, my Docker account. But these are the steps that you need and obviously you need to have Picado installed. So what I'm going to do now is set up my Helm chart. So I'm going to start with the CDS at Helm. And what this will do here is you'll see now we have a chart set up and I'm going to add some features to it. So as I mentioned, this application is secured using Access UAA. So now I'm going to add that. I'm going to add connectivity, which will set up a connectivity proxy for me. And then I'm going to add the, the, the destination service. And basically now what I need to do is configure my Helm chart. So you'll see that's done by uh, editing this values YAML. And there's a couple of different things that we need to, uh, to set here. So let me open that up and start working on that. So we don't, we're not using this. So that doesn't matter. So we want to have this uh, reference to our orders database or our orders DB secret. So this is that secret that I already had uh, set up, which contains my information for how I would connect to my HANA database. And there's two references to this. So you'll find the other one down here. I gotta change my container uh, repository to the mine. And there's two references to that. And I also need my cluster domain, which I can get right here within my Kima runtime. I don't need that part. And let me see, did I forget anything at the day? And there's, there's another values uh, YAML, which has a port that I want to change. And I have this application running on port 4004. So I'm going to change it from 880 to 404. I'm going to save that and I'm going to save this as well. And now basically I can uh, go ahead and install this application. Oops. So let me go ahead and do that. Which actually I don't actually have to uh, set up my cube config. I haven't done that yet. So this won't work yet. So just to check that we can do this. Actually, write the full command. It's going to prompt me to log in to the system, and it log logged me in. And I can see here that I got all my uh, namespaces here. So you see that I already created a dev namespace, and in my dev namespace. I have my orders uh, DB secret, which is what I'm referencing in the Helm chart. So now I can go ahead and install my Helm chart. 
you can see that this release doesn't exist, so it's going to install it now. We switch over the Kima. Can see that it's starting some stuff. And we see that we get our API uh, URL for our service, but this is not completely started yet. So we could click on this, but it won't work yet. So we can see if we go back and check our, okay, so now our, our pod is done. Now we could check the logs of it just to see what it has to say. And you can see that we connected to our HANA database and some other additional information. So now if I go ahead and refresh this and try to go to orders, you're gonna see I get a 401 because I'm not authorized yet. Okay, so now we can go back. Uh, you'll find these, I'm gonna close these files, but you'll find these commands to call the application in that request HTTP. And, and the way it's set now is to prompt you for each uh, of the different parameters that you need. So it's a little hard to, to use here. Uh, so you could put the parameters here as well, but uh, you can find Additionally here that we can just get these with curl commands. This is a little easier because we could set them with uh, parameters. So these are the way you would do it on a, uh, a MacBook. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to paste them in there. And so basically what they did was just set these different uh, parameters. So if I uh, go out the URL here, you can see I get the URL from that secret. And I also got the client ID and the client secret. And then I can then request an access token. And so now I have an access token to call this, uh, the service. And so now I need to adjust uh, this one. Uh, so it's going to use, here it is, just have to adjust the domain of this. And you can see here I get the, the orders. And if I now call the, the mock application, which I'll just, actually, let me copy this. And see, then I gotta change the URL. To copy that out. So that, so that should be going through my cloud connector. And you can see I get the same uh, response. So I get a, a, an ID of the, the order that was created. And you can see now if I went back to this local mock application that stopped it, and then I try to run this again with a, a different order number. You can see now I get a, an error because it's not running. So I'll start it again. I'll run this one more time. And then I get success there. And that covers the, the this session. So I hope you find this useful. And I hope you enjoyed the content. And I appreciate you listening to the session. Thank you.